Did you want to start off, Mimi, or, or organize? Um, yeah, yeah, I have I have a, a few questions, um, Jeff. Uh, there was a, a couple of things I wanted to mention. One is that um, I had the same experience that you had with the uh, with the bending of, of of time and space in my abduction. In one of my abductions, uh, well, one of my visions. Oh, you mean the craft. You mean this? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. When when I was shown that children were taken from Mars to Earth, yeah, there was no time. There was no flying around. There was no oh. skies. There was nothing. Right. It was just in Mars, in, on Earth. Yeah. Right. So so I just wanted to tell you that cool, you know Mimi. I had the same experience. Awesome. Um, and and I wanted to mention something to you. It's not really a question. It's more like um, some of the things that they've said to you. Uh, if you read Agenda 21 or Agenda 2030, you're going to find um, the UN, uh, the UN uh, manifesto about nature. You're going to find um, this, this separation of nature, letting nature go wild again. Right, yeah. You've and seen the thing about it is that um, I know that you had a, a vision of these cities and I'm just letting you know that it's being implemented now. Right. So I think the Greys are having a, a, a very, very deep and strong influence on uh, the globalists and the UN in particular um, because they've come up with this, you know, agenda thing, which they're pulling in and, you know, COVID, this whole COVID thing that's happening right now hmm. is, uh, is, is um, helping them to implement a lot of what's on the agenda. Um, yeah, please have a read because you're going to, it's gonna blow your mind how much has been implemented and how much it's rolling out already. Right. So it, when you were talking, it made me think that they, the greys, the ones that you've been in contact with must be in contact with very high ups higher ups in the UN um, because this is rolling out. It was written in 201, I think, um, maybe even even before, right. but it's definitely going to be finished by, you know, uh, very much finished by 21 this year. And then the wildness, um, what they're planning is having uh, centralized cities so everyone will live in a city, right? Uh, 5G cities, smart cities, right? Very, very dense um, community communities. And if you've ever seen the Hunger Games, that's what it makes me think of, because nature was not, they weren't allowed to go into nature. Right. It was fenced off, right? If you right. remember the girl who went hunting and then got caught and all that. Um, so this is what's, uh, this is what, Agenda 2030 is telling us it's going to happen, and uh, and also Agenda 21. We will not be allowed into the wild areas because um, the the people who have this agenda are wanting the Earth to replenish itself and go back to itself. Right. But you know right. that really really doesn't put a very nice spin on anyone who wants to do homesteading or preppers or people even just people who want to farm and live in the country like I do hmm. so I'm I object to all of this that you know that I object to it <laughs> so hmm. we we've been through this before hmm. but I just wanted to tell you that um these guys are having a very big influence on the UN and it's happening it's very, happening very powerful yeah yeah I don't I, yeah oh yeah go ahead Ian yeah no, I just that's in, uh, it uh, i just wanted to i just wanted to say that awesome yep. Mimi. awesome Mimi, in um 1989 i expect you, you might be aware of this but uh, there was a uh an abduction uh which was detailed in bud hopkins's book witness and uh it detailed the abduction you think of uh Paris de Fuela, the un uh leader at that time in the mind of that. Did you say Brinkley? No. Is that who you Eris said? Eris Dequela. 
Although he's not named in the book, uh, it's fairly obvious that he's the individual who is um, head of uh, you know, the, uh, the UN at that time. Well, I, whose book is it though? Who's the author? Bud Hopkins. Oh, Bud Witness. Hopkins. Okay. Uh, details the uh, abduction experiences of a Linda Cortile in uh, in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. New York. Okay, and, and uh, she had a vision of this. Yeah, it's it's well worth reading that book because uh, it right. does tie in uh, the abduction of the uh, of the UN. Well, we are definitely we're definitely li living through it, and it's being implemented. You know, yeah, uh, we we remember. can see that everything is tightening and, you know, people are becoming more compliant. Well, you know, Jeff is calling it uh, uh, kind, gentle people. I would say obedient and compliant people more like, you know, because I, I don't, I don't, I go, to, I don't go along with the gray agenda. I don't like it. I don't like the hybridization or, and all of it, but I, I don't deny that it's happening. You know, I just, I'm just one of the people who objects to it. But um, it's, it's definitely taking off like wildfire. Yeah. I think I'm gonna do a talk on that one of these days. I'm gonna write something when I stop moving so much. <laughs> hey, Jeff. Yeah, Crystal. Hey, I, I was I was wanting to go over a couple of things. I have a huge list of the commonalities that I found with uh, yours, your experience and mine. Yours is yours is much more in depth. Mine was sort of like the layman's version of meeting the grays, whereas yours is like way more in depth. But I wanted to just go over a couple of points just for everybody. Um, and just, you know, we've, we've discussed it as well, but I think it's fascinating some of the unusual things that are, that are, you just couldn't make it up. Like you just, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. for example, I, um, something that I found was really interesting is that you mentioned like seeing a satellite, like a satellite um, glint. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I found that so neat because I've seen that many times and I have, like literally told to look up at the sky and I've even pointed and had other people witness me go look and there it is it just shoots across but it's not like an obvious shooting star or a um or a ship it looks you know you're kind of like wait what was that yeah but I thought that was just so neat that you've seen the exact same thing and yeah. you can miss it it's so subtle yeah um but there were a lot of things awesome. like you talked about the the Federation, the Galactic Federation or community is what they said, um, the waves to the Himalayans. Yeah. And yeah. they call themselves the scientists. Yeah. And talking about rebuilding with us. Yeah. Um, the future was green with their technology. So, yeah. you know, that was advanced cities. Um, I'm trying to go through them quickly so I don't take up too much time. No. But I just... <laughs> So you know, I, I did want to say like that I wrote down some of those commonalities. They speak of God and they worship God, which they yeah. did mention. Um, so these are all things that seem to be like a pattern with a lot of contactees. Um, they also said, we can't tell you, they said to me and, and other people. And in your talk, you mentioned that they said we would use their technology and we just destroy ourselves and they said the same thing yeah. during my yeah so it's really neat that consciousness driven craft as well was shown um everything for the highest good that was another thing that i i felt was like a, a strong theme and then there were these other things like you mentioned that you had free spiritedness through your life you sort yeah. of had this wonder loss wonder loss right yeah yeah. And I just wanted to tell you, like, I have had the same thing. Like, you're always looking for something and you're kind of floating around, not sure. But, you know, it always seems to find you these mystical experiences that you speak about. Yeah. Um, and I definitely can relate to what you're talking about very much. Like, awesome. um, another thing I thought was really interesting is that the saved people, they have jobs in the new world. And I thought that was right. a really interesting point um as well as orbs i think that that was an important part um uh, because there's people all over the world who w are witnessing orbs um and so this is strongly tied into the phenomena i think but 
Um, I just wanted to make a note of it. I've also seen the orbs and uh, I have so many other points, but I don't want to, yeah, like I don't want to take up the whole thing. Awesome. Awesome, Crystal. Um, I think you should keep going. I think you should keep going. I want okay. To yeah. The other thing. Go ahead, Crystal. Go ahead. Okay, take your time. Sure. It's been three and a half hours. It's no problem. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, go for <laughs> I, it, Crystal. Yeah, I go for wanna, it. I want to hear about the uh, co corroboration uh, yeah. of your experiences. It's, it's valuable. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, it's it's like yeah, you're you're yours and my, we don't know each other. Like I mean, we barely yeah. know each other. We have all these things in common. The only thing that we really had in common is this experience and how. Uh, we kind of came together and met each other through being contactees with yeah. these extreme parallel um, points that yeah. you just couldn't make it up. Like it's the same yeah. people. It's yeah. the same things. Yeah. Um, another thing that uh, Mimi was mentioning, and I think all three of us can say for sure that we have in common with our contact events is witnessing time travel. Right. And I just wanted to make a point of that as well. Like witnessing that the craft and that the beings can bring us and bring themselves easily through uh, space and time. And I thought that was, that's a common one with maybe like many other contactees, but the time travel was uh, like, that's significant and that's happening. And uh, we are light years behind them with that kind of technology. So I thought that was really neat, Mimi, that you brought that up as well, the time travel. Yeah. Because yeah, of course you guys saw that I had been brought to the future and Jeff, you've been brought, you've see, seen things in the future as well, right? Yeah, so. yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, the, as far as the time travel, Crystal, um, actually when I was shown the screen, um, it's kind of like the screen of destiny or the screen of time, I, I get, I've started to call it, the Apunians call it that, um, they call it this, the screen of time. You actually go back in time you, when you're looking, yeah. when you're looking at those screens that they show you. Um, you're you're after you actually go in and you're there, so you're time traveling <clears throat> as well, yeah. which is really interesting, isn't it? I think it's yeah. just it's so interesting. It, like that's that, one of the uh, most amazing parts, really. Yeah, it is. I mean, the fact that there's civilizations out there, and they they're not the only one. I'm sure they're not the only one that have mastered not only space travel but I think it's connected, like time and space are, are definitely connected. We're just scratching the surface with quantum physics and they're like way, way ahead of us. They, they already know all about that. They can go to any point in time. I don't know how, what their limitations are, but it seems like, uh, like Jeff, if you were saying that they are tapped into the God essence or directly in co contact with the God essence, then they could probably go to any any point in time or space really I mean, yeah it's pretty limitless. no you're you're no there's something going on yeah there's something and it's like yeah it's quantum god thing like uh susie Hint, so I, I try to analyze like i have this uh vision in this white room it's in my first video and i see my i'm looking at my myself that i just died so i'm looking at myself dying and then i go into this other realm and the only answer i have to this is susie hansen once saw on their craft the galaxy in real time it's impossible right it's like you can't do this stuff and then they reversed it and showed hiroshima and how the effects of hiroshima spread out into the galaxy and so like yeah they have this is this is like quantum this is quantum this is this is beyond this, this is their top and of course why couldn't they just go forward then yeah and so i think they're seeing probabilities and then they try to work with that and contact that you know abduct that person and that person will change history in this way and they keep i think they're really like really they're not just doing the bloodlines they're doing time they're yeah it's just wacky what they're doing yeah, yeah. it is and another thing that you mentioned was the near-death experience and i just wanted to let you know that i've had at least two of those um, one of them, though, I thought was really interesting is I experienced it without experiencing a death event. So I actually was sleeping and I was a child. So going back, of course, you know, these mystical experiences, like you're saying, you think that you're li living this spiritual life that, you know, all these strange spiritual things are happening. But when you look back and you connect it to interactions with like alien intelligence, <laughs> right. it could very well have been orchestrated by them for a specific reason to show you that you don't exist just in a body that you have yeah. a soul or to show you something because one of my near-death experiences was from experiencing death but the other one was not it was not i just woke up on the ceiling and i was a child and uh these kind of things are like parallels between many contactees and i think it's 
really fascinating and it's really in important. I think it's super important when we think about the kind of contact that everybody's having and how advanced you're saying it's advancing. Yeah. It's becoming more advanced and you're looking at people coming forward who are saying that they're having these, you know, beyond surreal experiences. So yeah, yeah I just thought I'd mention the, the parallels there and um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. And Crystal, like, like there's, there's more parallels. Like there's way, there's more things between you and me that were odd, oddly matching. I, I don't want to like, go into it too much but it's it's just a yeah. maybe maybe you me and ian like i think it would be really fascinating to really share with all this with ian because he's really studying this stuff and uh there are the, but there's like the way some of your mind lives have the way our life rolled out is similar it's like really strange like it's there like are some synchronicities yeah yeah there are some weird synchronicities that match and uh yeah 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 so some yeah work and them. the other thing i wanted to ask you was did you during uh, or have you throughout your life um, experienced, I know you said synchronicities and, and me as well, like crazy synchronicities, but also did you notice repetitive numbers uh, looking at the clock at a certain time? Yeah, yeah. Well, you, so you said threes, right? We, we were talking once and you mentioned threes and uh, and I don't I was like, oh yeah, well I do that. And that's, that always has a three in it. And I was like kind of thinking to myself, I'm always doing that too. And I, like you have, we chatted about this, that your sync that your intuition communicates so mine is 11 so uh, if i'm thinking a thought at a certain time and it's 11 11 then i'm like oh hey that has meaning for me and i had this thought this certain, certain there? time M mine is 11 11 yeah it's like a mine is 11 11 as well <laughs> so is mine <laughs> right right so, yeah well. and uh crystal i haven't told you i had another one 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 today straight <laughs> off <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll like tell you about that later. Number sensitive, yeah. Three thirty-three. Uh, anything with you know repetitive numbers, but mostly ones and threes for me. Yeah. And you know, it sounds like you too, Jeff. Yeah. Oh, no, that's what it was. You mentioned and threes, Ian. and I <laughs> and mentioned, and you said the Greys loved threes as well too. And I realized, oh my God, there was a there was a contact event where I see information laid out in in threes. Yeah, it's like one two three, one two three, one two three, and there was three in three stages of information and then those each had threes yeah i was like oh it's very symbolic and uh they do lay out information in numbers like you asked that and i was we were talking about numbers at that time yeah yeah it's really cool man yeah yeah it's pretty cool well, yeah, anyway. yeah I, I'll, I'll just tell you briefly what mine was today uh and it was odd i've got some scales that i i use for wangs and packages in my business i just have some other a couple of packages every week nothing much I usually just touch the bottom of the scales. They're set in kilograms, and I do the weight, and that's it. But today, I touched the bottom of the scales, and it stuck to pounds. And that's odd. I've not had that before. Pounds, pounds, whatever. Anyway, I weighed the package already, and it was seven point seven kilos. I put the package on again, trying to get a more accurate reading. And it said 1.1, obviously 1.1 pounds. I took the next package, package off, put the next one on. They're two different packages, and they could be slightly different. And that again said 1.1. Uh, so I thought something is odd here. It's never done that before. Going some kilograms, it's always got uh, gone back. Anyway, back and it worked okay. But I thought that was very significant. I had 1.1, 1 1.1. .1, 1 .1. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Are you are you just are you just starting to get these synchronicities, or is this something you've noticed throughout your life? Me, um, I've just started to notice them a little bit more since I've been uh, corresponding with you, Crystal. I've seen them before, but I, I and I, I've been aware that other people in the uh, in the phenomena have seen them, but in the last few days, I'd say that's ramped up a little bit. awesome that's awesome yeah thanks Ian. thanks Ian, for sharing that <clears throat> there was something else that i wanted to mention uh, unless someone else wants has questions oh, camera and uh, maybe uh, do you want your camera off oh uh, i didn't mean to do that um yeah does anyone else has have questions 
right now? Um, well, I've got just a couple of specific questions about uh, Jeff's production experience, but you carry on, Mimi. That's fine. Let's keep. Really um, I just um, there was a, there was a, just another thing about the God thing um, when when Jeff when you saw that ball of light coming right. out of the computer, Jeff. Right. 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 Yeah. And you realized that it was AI. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I just, kind of. I, I kind see of. AI as very different from what I consider God. See exactly. This is you not. Know, I know God is a difficult word. No, AI is a difficult word. It's uh, this is not AI. Yeah. It's 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 quantum. It's not it's not what you think it is. See, saying calling it AI is not act. It's call, calling it AI is like calling I don't know. It's not AI. It's it's or saying UFOs are, are mechanical machines because they're not either. So it's like right, the right, stuff is right. not what we. It's just it's our human brains can't see this right. Yeah, we, we can't get this right right now. We don't know what it is. And so it so when people are saying it's AI, I have heard like other people say, oh, it's all they're all saying the grays are robots, but that's not accurate either. The grays aren't robots, and this isn't AI, and the crafts aren't just yeah. crafts. So there's something right. else going on here, and, and it's and it's and if yeah. I think if people go to the quantum level then it may start making sense that this could be literally the nature of the base universe. And I, so right. far, everyone has been like, no, 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 a, a, God, a computer can't be God. But maybe it could. How, what, like, if you study quantum computers, it could maybe go down that direction. I, I like mm -hmm. to start asking like quantum techs who can actually answer this. But I, right. I, it seems to me that it could go that direction. So, yeah. I've got there a was a, another thing too. I just wanted to ask you when you had your white light experience, which sounds very much like a Kundalini. Oh yeah. You yeah. said that I you you mentioned that you have seen past lives, because that's that's something that's um, similar to mine when when I had my automatic rising. Right. Mine no, came that. from a chanting vowels. It didn't come from from an alien ship or anything. It's just chanting <laughs> vowels and my right. Kundalini rose. Right. Uh, and I saw on my face, all the incarnations that I've had. Right, powerful. You know, life. I went to the mirror to see what was going on because it was just such a weird experience. And then on my face, I saw all the, all the lives. Right. It was very interesting, but it, it's your thing makes me think of it also. So right. there are similarities, even though, you know, it's different beings and I, I think different craft. Mm -hmm. And that this is my last thing that I wanted to say is you and Crystal seem to have the red craft in common. She's never seen a red my, craft. Huh? I've asked her. She's never seen a red craft. She's seen the white oh, stars okay. like I do. White. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I know. I asked. Mine I actually, is blue and green. I know. I was and looking, I've, yeah. I'm I've always it. I've always wondered if people if the different green. different beings come in different colored yeah. vehicles because mine is blue and green and I haven't right. heard too many people who have seen the blue and green ones. People right. have said they see blue sometimes and white. Right. And I've seen silver and white and, and blue and green. Right. But uh, and I've seen red in the sky, but I've never had it up close. Right. Right. So, you know, I think the red are a particular kind of them, you know? Yeah, yeah. I don't know yet. Maybe, I saw yeah. a blue one in Ireland, a big blue one, huge cigar Did shape. you? Yeah, huge. It was a beautiful, beautiful, like a sky blue or kind of almost like an electric blue. And uh, it, mm -hmm. they told me to go look at the window and there it was, it was coming in slow. It wanted people to see it. And that was during the London riots. So they, I think they were trying to get some attention, like, hello, everybody. <laughs> hello, mm. Ryan. Or maybe trying Better. to calm people down, maybe. Right. Well, it's it sure, it sure looked like a UFO. <laughs> it was huge. right. But it was blue. Yeah. It was blue. So, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, my mine was blue, like an electric turquoise. Powerful. Blue. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's the same guys. <laughs> well, I think I think that I think that certain kinds of people travel in the different ships, right? And um, yeah. that's something actually that I'd like to research is the, the different colors when people tell their stories, you know, what color they're talking about that the ships are. Yeah. 
yeah, and the and kind of said, experiences that they have on them. And yeah, and they did mention that they'd traveled in different ways, like in a spirit body and a matter body, which uh, Jeff, some of your things are bang on with that as well, because you've seen your, your own spirit body. They right. showed you your spirit body and you turned into an orb. Yeah. And uh, that, that might be a way for, for beings, many different beings, because they're all quant on the quantum level and traveling in consciousness. And yes. then of course, like physically, they might be behind themselves. They're on, maybe their body is on a ship somewhere and their consciousness, their light body is already here doing things like the sky's the limit with the quantum field. You can yeah. do anything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, agreed, agreed. Ian, uh, I was going to say, yeah, I'm, the, I'm sure that it's inevitable that the quantum computing will capture and quantum physics will catch up. We will achieve that aim, and whether or not we're having help with that to get there is, uh, is I'm open to as well. Right. I I'm reminded of the uh, mini series Devs. E E V. S. And I don't know if any of you have seen it, but I'd advise you to look out for it and watch it. That uh, evolves around a, a high-tech company in, uh, let's say, Northern California, who who have a development team who are working on, uh, let's say, quantum computing into a huge development into, into reaching into the past and, and into the future and changing it. Of, uh, what is it of, called? Say, what's the theory. what's the series Devs. called? D e, e v s devs as an abbreviation for developments. Okay. I'll send you a link to it. Maybe like thank a thank you. in a moment, but that's interesting. Uh, I worked for a computer company, and I do believe that. Well, I I know that it works in the United States. That uh, and we've heard from Colonel Corso that, and it's going on now, obviously, that uh, technology is seeded out to high-tech companies. It's almost like the hand of the Terminator in the, uh, in, in the Terminator films, where the hand from the future becomes the development of the present. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, my brain is... Right, and I forgot. Uh, <laughs> Joe, on Joe Rogan, he had. Uh, You've had too much art. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> ah, those images in my mind. Um, uh, and that <laughs> Joe Joe Rogan had uh, not J. Allen Hynek because he's not alive anymore. Uh, Jacques Vallée. He had Jacques Vallée on his uh, show, and he explained how Jacques Vallée was part of boards that try to get this alien technology out to co corporations and this is how they do it. And he, or he's aware of people who who are the insiders who have this information and, and apparently that's right. Yeah, they, they, and everything's cornered off. So the, the corporation is just given some advanced technology. They don't know where it came from. And then they say, figure this out. And then, and then the guy says, oh, we just, we got this from China people or and they make it up, right? And then it turns, and then they try to hack it and they try to use it to development. So that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's Phil, Philip Corso said that in his book, The Day After Roswell. Philip Corso made right. that claim. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's that's how it's done. It's seeded out to the technology companies. Yeah. Uh, and then it's all carefully controlled, of course. But they they do the development on these projects, uh, but yet they don't quite know the source of the originating that they've got, whether or not they're actually back engineering some alien technology or as, they, as, the, as the US military sources will often call it foreign technology not necessarily meaning foreign to our shores right on yeah. technology right and I I think I told you Ian that I had recently had a dream about uh, humans back engineering I think that's what we were doing. We back engineered some technology and people were able to replicate some of those smaller ships, the egg shaped uh, ships. I saw that really clearly in a vision or a dream just recently, which doesn't happen too often with the grays, but it did happen. They showed me the ships. So it looks like we've already done it. Oh, I'm sure we have. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Also, 
that, that reminds me of just something I did want to mention to Jeff is the, uh, I'm sure, great presentation on the Eisenhower uh, uh, episode. Anyway, I really enjoyed that. I hope that you could tell it perhaps even as a separate standalone. That really solidifies a lot of the information about the, uh, about the episode. But going back to, to that, I think we've had the quick response teams. In fact, I know we have, and I've actually got a, a witness that I spoke to uh, only a few weeks ago who reported a, let's say, a quick response cleanup team to uh, an event that had happened. Uh, oh, yeah. That would probably be back in the 60s. So, and I know that uh, there's there's other books that have that I've got which detail early contactee events where there have been cleanup events from a, a highly specialised team, probably getting back to the fifth. Right, that had insider knowledge that had occurred beforehand. Is that what you're saying? That they were ready and waiting. That they were they were ready to move in uh, yeah. and 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 to take over the place. And they can do and they do it within the within the day yeah. next day they're there yeah yeah so they have someone's talking to them some some great well, alien is talking to someone in a suit yeah what about the whole looking glass theory that people have talked about where we already have technology and i mean i'm going out there here because i don't know too much about this but i have heard of this theory about the powers that control the world having access to like a quantum um, type of device where they can see into the future, I think, or they can see things. I'm not sure if, if that's yeah, too out there for this conversation, but. Uh, we, I'm okay. with you. I understand about the looking glass technology that uh, they're rumored to, to have had and whether or not it's, uh, it's technology that has been given to us or that we, uh, get our hands on that way you know the interesting thing about the looking glass thing is that um what they found in 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 the quantum field is that if you're looking at things the observer actually influences the behavior of the of the uh, particles and things like that and i think it's also true with thought so you can have a looking glass scenario of the future but humanity can change it we can change it um one of the very very strong things that that i was given as a as a job um is uh, uh mass meditation when i had my abduction that's what that was about partly a big part of it mass meditation to bring in energies that will stop things from happening so uh so so i don't you know that was one of the things uh, about your talk jeff that i was like oh you know they said humanity didn't make it well we still have a chance we don't you know i don't i don't see looking glass futures or any kind of like uh pre predestination i think that we still can and, and I think that we're doing it, you know, just by, by doing disclosure and by doing a number of things that people are working on. I think that, uh, you know, that, that we can change that future and that we can change ourselves uh, so that we, we are equal spiritually to our technology, even where we're at today. You know, so I, I don't ex I don't really accept that humanity failed. I don't like to I don't I don't like to uh, clamp down like that on humanity and say oh, we failed. I don't think we failed yet. You know. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> cool. it's what I yeah I can only relay what I got. So that's it. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm just saying, you know, that there's there's things that they tell you that, you know, are hard for me to accept because because I don't I don't want to accept that humanity failed. Right. You know, I still want to believe in us. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I hear you. I understand. Yeah, I hear you. But yeah, I just I just wanted to say though, like a repetitive message in all, in so many contactees is that this is like an, an inevitable event. 
it seems like there isn't really like they don't say okay you guys have time it's we're gonna shift it you gotta meditate it's kind of like okay this is what's happening and this is a message that we're all getting we don't want it to happen either because it's it's horrific to imagine that the entire mm -hmm. world would simultaneously die in some kind of cataclysmic event but it seems like there is a message that's coming through whether they're trying to have an effect on our future by uh scaring us like kind of scaring us straight or oh, i had i had the strong message too right uh, the message i i got is that uh earth is going exactly the same route as mars that was that was what i was told which is pretty scary you know because when you look at mars i mean there's no green like you know there's no green left they lost their atmosphere they lost their soil they lost life they lost their water and that's what i was told is that we are in danger especially with water that's one of the areas that that i was warned about uh, jeff what was your expression uh we know that crystal used the expression we will help you rebuild uh you had a similar one uh which was their their message to you and i'm sorry i, I can't find it in my notes so I'm yeah, right. I haven't. Uh, so <clears throat> in, in this contact event, they don't, they, it's all uh, kind of summarized really simply. Like they just, I see this earth re rebuilt in general. And then, and then there's a city there and the planet earth is all in nature. The great waves contact event that is similar to mining crystals. I haven't done it. I haven't gone public with it yet. I haven't presented on it. It's not in this part of the story yet. Um, no, and you referred to something this evening and you, you, you mentioned a, a specific phrase or something that you were told similar to we will help you to rebuild or something like that, that there was going to be some assistance. I'm just not getting it. I just don't know what it is. I remember you said humans and greys will work together. In oh, the humans future, and greys will work together in the future. Yeah, that's a question I had. Yeah, too. yeah well it's not like i actually have a lot of answers except for i that was those were the words and i didn't see any of their images with it um that right so i i uh so so it, it was explaining because right i thought we failed and he said you didn't fail right you're evolving is what's happening and they're mm -hmm. they're kind of Thank forcing you. the evolution <laughs> yeah well no i i was telling it from my perspective as a 20 year old right. i thought we failed right it was like okay, okay. yeah yeah so i, I tried thought to, that they said we failed no no he actually said you didn't fail right he okay. said you're evolving is what he said so i'm the one who was like we failed like oh my god we sucked at this we failed and because uh, and he was and he was just casual about it right he's casual, <laughs> he's casual about the whole thing he's like yeah well you'll be saved don't worry about it <laughs> it's like, ah. um and but at the end is when i'm and seeing the god -like thing and he and i kind of get it that they're being guided by this like god presence or this quantum god presence and it's god it's guiding the whole process and then they are kind of relying on it whether and i know there's a mantis involved in somewhere so i don't know i don't know what the hierarchies are like here but it does seem like this thing is guiding the process and then uh, he, uh so he's he's kind of i'm kind of getting it i'm saying oh this thing is guiding everything and he says yeah so humans haven't failed he said it's actually a beautiful process that's, that's occurring right now he said humans haven't failed they're just evolving and we're evolving and that's the idea is that from his perspective as i understood it the great perspective they are also seeing the merging of the two species as an evolution for them as well so it's not just a humans like are gonna like be altered now that being said, I don't know that it actually means the there's. I actually think it'll still mean there'll still be four foot tall and grays out in space doing gray things, but that there's a version of the species that will be created here, and that they see it as a kind of exciting thing that there there's this evolution kind of merging together. And then when I left that room, uh, there was a an image of a great like a computer program image of like a human being and a and a hybrid but side by side, and said. So humans and greys will work side by side with each other, um, eventually merging the, the species into one over time. So then I realized, oh, this isn't a takeover. Because at first I was terrified. I was like, this is a takeover. They're building the new human. What's wrong with the old one, right? Mm -hmm. So right. He, he explains it all. And then, then he says, uh, yeah, the, the species will merge together over time. That's the kind of the gist of it. So uh, the, I didn't get anything about the future or their role, just that they would, we would work together. I think that's what it was that I kind of saw the friendship or the, or the when he said it to me, he did, there was the feeling of two species working together as friends 
as as the future of humanity rolls on and have this, you, the DNA would come together. Yeah. Have you ever heard the theory, um, and some abductees have been told this, that the greys are actually us in the future and they're coming back for our DNA to fix some of the physical problems that got created from, you know, from the event that yeah. we're Yeah, so about. there's, a, there's some, so there's, there's a couple of theories about like, the greys need our genetics for um, for themselves for something like okay let's, there was the early theories were the greys the greys are dying as a dead species and they need us to survive and right. or the other one is they come back as humans but the whole point of those theories that don't make sense is why would they do it now why don't you do it 400 years ago when we weren't good at this and we couldn't prepare it and we didn't have films and we couldn't tell the public like there's there's a couple of theories that don't make sense also why are they why are they taking people who are genetically healthy why don't they take why don't they take like strong people why don't they take people who are fighters why don't they take intelligent people they really don't focus on those type of genetics they focus on receding populations that's what it is they're taking samples of the entire population and so that's mm. what it really it does look like it's genetics for the purpose of receding i can't see there's no other theory here that matches nothing else adds mm -hmm. up that they're from the future that they need us at this time they should have done it a thousand years ago and they would have been able to do it successfully then right like they like it doesn't make sense that they have to that that would be the case this is the only picture that makes sense is that they're that they're receding the population and that they're geneticists by as a role that's their that's their kind of mm -hmm. galactic role and that they, right. this is their job and that they're they're doing it and they're doing it anyway regardless of our feelings about it yeah. Also, yeah, I, I want to ask a question. Uh, you're saying that humans and greys will work together in the future, but if you have humans side by side with um, hybrids, doesn't that uh, imply post cataclysm, like after billions of people have been wiped out? It and maybe it would be nice if they could explain to you how those billions of people could take rebirth. Like you, they've shown you many bodies they have in place in these tubes ready to go. Like right. do they have bodies for they but anyways, I think what you're what you're implying this is a post-cataclysmic humans and hybrids who work together. And yeah. sure, over many generations they could just become a hybrid, which I guess is incompatible with our atmosphere. Maybe the greys aren't compatible with this atmosphere. But you are you are talking post cataclysm, right? Yeah, you got it. You got it. Yeah, there's it's the idea, right? There was very like symbolic this earth was being eaten up, turns into a big flame of fire, and then that's rebuilt with a gray population or with like the gray mind dominating anyway. Um, yeah, and the, the premise being whatever that symbol is of the earth being eaten away and then turning to fire, whatever that turns out to be, whether it's great waves or or whatever, I, we don't, I don't know that we know that what it'll be. It would be after that. Yeah, it's, it's accurate, yeah. Well, that, yeah, that, sounds, that, that sounds very much like what happened to Mars, right? Yeah, what I was shown, and it's yeah, it sounds exactly the same as what was shown to me right. in the short, really short mm -hmm. layman's version of y your story. But they said the exact <laughs> same thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> another thing was that, um, like, they showed me working together with us didn't look like a takeover at all. It looked like yeah. a, empowering us, like yeah. empowering the human mind to yeah. grow, teaching us about the universe, teaching us about science. There were humans yeah. in that classroom, human children. They weren't, uh, they didn't look different. Um, but I also did have visions of, there was uh, an intermingling of not just the greys, there were many other, like many, many other beings. So it was like, you know, that big family of, of just, you know, everybody it wasn't right. even just the greys and humans right the, the, well this is i couldn't explain it in the intro because there was weird images all over the place but uh, <laughs> the idea being is that she told me in my third contact event that they're putting their fetus they're putting their genetics into humans fetuses to make us to put us on a galactic level so the idea that, that there's this raising of a general level that's like a society or like there's some other like a level for for all of us to engage into and right now we're just kind of like not there not understanding things and so the galactic level always some, and seemed to imply like a federation that there was this some kind of if we got to this level then the other beings could interact with us in a proper way yeah there's some kind of it seemed like we joined a family is really what it feels like yeah yeah they that was exactly what they said 
as well to me. And it was like the, you'll be part of the community, intergalactic right. community. You'll be part of. So you're not part of it yet because you can't see it. You can't hear it. You can't feel it. Your intuition is shut off and you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to see them if they were standing in front of your face. Right. So you have to become part mm -hmm. of, and I think that's what you're talking about, this evolutionary, psychically, spiritually, like, you know, quantum mm -hmm. yeah. field. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and a, another interesting thing is how they, how he scared me first. So yeah, like, it, it's weird how he did that. It, like, he scared me with making it feel like a takeover. He called it the new human. Oh, we're just making the new human. And I was like, ah, and then it, I got kind of scared by the bodies I saw and then then went to this room and it was all weird. And it was, I was actually really uncomfortable and I got really upset about it. And and I, I kind of was like panicking, like, why are you doing this? Why, what's happened? Why did we do this? And tell me about it. And then it's, and he just talks factually. And then, and then as he's giving me more information, he's giving this larger picture that they've kind of been involving them themselves. And then, and then, and then it becomes like about the, the, where their inspiration's coming from. And, and then the end result is right. Okay. They are like, they are kind of like big brothers. They're, 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 they're I don't know, they're humanity's agents of change. Literally, this is like them making us better people, making a planet a better place to be. Yeah. Yeah, it's very powerful. Um, can you, um, I, I was very interested in the dead people at one point and then you just kind of skipped over it. Yeah. So they said they were making a new human out of it, but what else, what else happened there? I mean, did you just end up, that's all they said or did you yeah, ever so find out why they had dead bodies? No, I don't. Yeah, I know. This is like, this was analyzed in my hypnotic regression. It was like, right. what is going on here? Why is there a cow? And why are there two humans? Why are they, why are they here? Right. What's going on? And I, I was like, I, I can't get anything else. There's just, it was just because of this is, this helps them in some way. And I think, see, everything is symbolic, right? Everything with these guys is symbolic. Everything is weird with them. It's like, why do they, why did she mention Zeta Reticuli in the ship? Like, it's a really weird thing to do. Why did they, why did they, why, when, why did they let me walk to the tent? And then realize that I needed to like know, like there's some things like don't they can they zoom me up like they've been zooming me up the entire time. This is the only well, this was the budget UFO like this didn't make any sense at all. And I so everything was very everything's placed in a very specific way. And then the so I really feel like they really work with subconscious minds and they really know how this will be perceived. And I don't know. And so why was there a cow and why was there two dead people? It just seemed to really not make sense to me actually. And it didn't answer yeah, the making the new human, it just kind of the feeling when I as much as I could get out of it was this helped them in some way, they analyzed the human body and then did something with the hybrids and it matched something I just, yeah, I don't know, maybe it helped them figure out the genetics and why would they need a cow I don't know this stuff. Right. But yeah. they didn't go into it much more much more. No, they just, yeah. they just use it as a model to say, talk about the human brain. And she, and he was pointing at the, the woman's brain, though it wasn't exposed. He was like pointing at her head. And was oh, like, I see. They were, the, they were, they were, okay. I get it. Yeah, it happened. So we went down. So they weren't we came, like doing Frankenstein stuff. They were studying the bodies. Yeah. Yeah. The heart okay. was, the, the chest was open. And then he was okay, like, and then okay. we came back and he said, oh, this is the human mind. And he was explaining things about the human mind to me. Yeah. So he used, right. he used the, okay. I get yeah. it. Yeah, I didn't know yeah. that before. And another <laughs> thing that that I that I thought was also in line with um, my own, because I also have been doing um, some channeling, and uh, I have seen uh, some new things that I didn't realize. But I think that they actually um, can be in touch with our dead. So, like, I think that they can actually they they can access those realms. Yes. Um, and yeah. they can work with souls. Yeah. And I think that's like pretty important as well that it's just sort of common knowledge to them. Like, oh yeah, you don't die. You're just, you're just your soul. This yeah. is your in, Yeah, in my first contact event, I'm in the white room. I'm in this orb state. And then they show me, they show me my past life that I died in. So they, they show me the death of my last life, going up to heaven, going into this dimensional space. Then I become this me who manages all the lives. So I'm watching it. And then they show me that the grays came up to that self. So the gray actually comes in and then they actually interact with that higher self. They don't interact with the people, the guy who's been reborn every time. They interact with the guy who's making all the choices about those reborns. So yeah, right. the higher self. The higher whatever, self. The higher self, yeah. Us. And then yeah. that, right. that yeah. being right. they're interacting with. And it, what that says to me is who these grays are. 
right? It says like my higher self is like a God thing. It's like, I know that because I can bring it in and I can feel it sometimes. And that's, mm -hmm. that's the space these guys can, yeah, you're right. They know how, they, for them, it's no problem. It's like, yeah, it's easy, easy peasy yeah. for them. Yeah. And they could, they, if they want to, like they did to me as a child and they've, they've saved me from death in real life, but they've also brought me up out and I've had these experiences where my soul is separated. And I, you can't just, I mean, that doesn't just happen. You don't just go into a tunnel and like they, I think that that was invoked by them. I think that they were able to have an effect in order to whatever their result is. I mean, I'm extremely uh, connected to them and extremely sensitive. And maybe it was uh, like orchestrated, like your life orchestrated in order to have that higher connection to them and to the rest of the universe. But like they did that, like they, yeah. they must have done that. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Thinking back, like, do you have a near death experience while you're sleeping? There's nothing smothering your face. There's your heart doesn't stop when you're eight for no reason while you're sleeping. I mean, it's very unusual. You don't have any medical problems. And all of a sudden you're in a tunnel and you're floating up to your dead relatives and there's your pets. And it's just, it's, it's, it, it's an interesting part of what they're doing. And I think yeah. it's totally like technology. They have technology that's doing that. Like you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And well, this is, like if they have if they have this god this is this is what i've you know if they have this god quantum technology stuff and they have a place like the white room then they clearly have technology that it can that, that can help them become dimensional to go into these spaces i think this is i think this is kind of the key they have a dimensional they have technology that allows them to turn into these phases or to maybe to phase. And maybe that's what a quantum computer could do. It could, it could allow you to phase. It could allow you to go into these other realms. And yeah, they don't just go there like willy nilly. They make, so what they showed me crystal is they showed me, I saw a grid that had all the bodies that have, that have a great alien DNA in them. And that the, the higher self goes to this room or this space and then plans out the life there. So then, so this is them. They built the grid. They built, so they're so, they're not just like, Oh, they'll go there to like to feel good. <laughs> they go there as a job, as a mission, as as a something that they, they have to do to as the part of the purpose to with the planet. So like it's just it's the genius behind it actually is what it's kind of staggering that they were building, keeping track of all the lives. The higher self comes in, make, chooses a life and a family line, and then builds a life out of it. it like ah, it's just this is this is mind boggling is what it is. And yeah, <laughs> again, it's why the disclosure is just so. You can't just have disclosure, man. This is you need to raise up the population. Yeah. Yeah, it's so complex and it's so complicated that people wouldn't be able to wrap their head around it. Yeah. Uh, because it's it's on a level that if you don't know what happens after you die, and you have no idea about a spirit world, and that's all still mystical to people. It's not common knowledge. Like it, yeah. people want to believe it. There's no concrete evidence. They're working <laughs> on it. Like it's the it's the real concrete evidence yeah here you go if you don't believe me we'll just pop you out of your body right, right. and come, yeah. come to the eye. take that <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's i've been popped out myself too yeah. you know found myself at the ceiling you know i, like I see you out of body thing